Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ed DeVoe, president of the New Jersey Cannabis Business Association. Welcome to another segment of Lunch and Learn. We'll be getting started shortly. In the meantime, please feel free to use the chat. Make sure you click everyone, not just panelists. Uh, click on everyone. Please feel free to, uh, to share your information and network in the chat feature. We'll be getting started momentarily. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Once again, I'm Ed DeVoe, president of the New Jersey Cannabis Business Association. I want to welcome you to another segment of Lunch and Learn, a program, a webinar that we do most every Friday from noon until about 1230, 1245, where you hear from some of the best and brightest professionals in the cannabis industry. What I'd like to do first is thank our sponsors of Lunch and Learn. Our sponsors are Proteus 420, Financial Resources Federal Credit Union, Sachs LLP, Burton Trent Public Affairs, Cure Relief, Garden State Green Energy, Dutchie, Puffin Entrepreneurs and Investors, Sprague Energy, our preferred energy partners. Thank you, Sprague Energy. The Sheet Metal Workers Local 19. I want to thank everyone for joining us this afternoon. Uh, I will backtrack just a little bit. I want to thank everyone who attended uh, last Wednesday's, this past Wednesday's event. I want to thank uh, all those who braved the rain. Uh, fortunately, in New Jersey, we didn't get too much snow, but I want to thank everyone for joining us at Old Man Rafferty's in New Brunswick. We had a great time there. Uh, I want to thank all those who came and our sponsor, uh, U.S. Payments. U.S. Payment was our sponsor. I want to thank everyone who, who attended thank our sponsor, and also want to give you a save the date. Our save the date is February 28th. That will be our next networking event. Details are to follow. So thanks so much. Well, to get into today's program. <clears throat> thank you. So save the date. Yes, we're going to celebrate lifting the cap. If you're not familiar with that, February 23rd, the CRC lifts the cap. On, on cultivation facilities. So we're gonna do a save, save the date, lift the cap celebration on February 28th. So please mark your calendars, details to follow. Well, this afternoon, uh, we have with us Alexone Kalazos. Alexone is with the B. Gill Group. Alexone has been with us before and uh, I, we're old friends. So Alexone, thank you once again for joining us. No, thank you for the invitation and the opportunity. So great, great to be with you. Great, great. So for those that are uh, on the call today, on the webinar today, and for those who will uh, check us out in YouTube when we upload uh, today's segment, uh, I want to get started with this. Uh, you, you're a consultant. You're a great consultant in many different spaces. And the Beagle Group 
uh, does a lot of representation in the cannabis industry and other industries. Uh, one of the, the, the first questions or first comments uh, that we get uh, is, uh, do I need a consultant? Uh, cons or they, and they typically follow that with, well, consultants are expensive. And I hear bad things about consultants. So uh, Alex Owen, if you would, please uh, take us through some of the reasons why we in fact do use consultants. And uh, more importantly, is there a way of vetting a consultant before you go down that road and realize that maybe I didn't get the right consultant for me. And then I have a, a bad taste in my mouth uh, because I hired a consultant. So that is a great question, especially for smaller businesses that are trying to come in They're already in New Jersey. So that is a really good question. And the first thing that I would say is that you need to start finding out what your is, is an operational expense. It's one of your expenses. Uh, the answer would be, for obvious reasons, yes, you should have a consultant of some is the kind what kind of consultant do you need is your you should be your bigger question. Um, what we've discovered is that my specialty has always been at the very local level, government local level. And the difference of what I have done for my clients is truly, really understanding at the very local level, what is it that you need? How do you get the process? Under understanding the process, getting uh, the people that you want to hear your message to actually hear it and have that. So the answer would be, yes, is important to one but you also have several other expenses. So also finding out what part of your process do you think you need this particular consultant and for what reasons are you using it? And so that would be one. The other one that I that we have, we talk to our clients also is some of this work that we do is not, it, it's a lot of time and it's a lot of labor and sometimes they don't really see what is happening in the back end. So what we say is that, Give yourself some time. So we work with our clients and we tell them this and we, we have an agreement of four, you know, four to six months first. This is what it so uses in. We can always uh, end our agreement if it's not working, if it's not getting the, uh, you know, the, you're not getting the services that you need or the results that you need. But put it in your budget. And then, and then if three months works out and then you have those conversations, like, listen, I'm not, I don't know. I'm not sure that the, sometimes the answer is very quickly it happens in three months, more than six months. Let's say we have an agreement of six months and the result good or bad happens in less, in less, in less time than we thought. Um, it could be a good or bad again, but then you can always assess those kinds of agreements and the kind of work that you're getting for your money, basically. Um, but the answer is yes, you do need a, you need some sort of guidance. That's what consultants are. They guide you in the process um, based on all the other information that we have gathered with clients, with the industry, and with just the, the know of doing this. That, that's a great point, Alex. So thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, so, so now let's say I'm with a team and I'm preparing uh, my application and or I'm getting ready to prepare, I've made the decision, I've actually put in my budget that for a consultant. Now, how do I vet consultants? Uh, how do I find the right one for me? What's some guidance? One, find out, first of all, is the, it depends on the kind of industry that you're going. So for example, if you're doing a cultivation, it, it depends on what is it that you're doing and what you're looking for. So if you're looking for a writer, which it again is also, it's, it's a consultant slash writer, you need to understand what their budget is, what their experience is. And, and that experience matters because if you're a micro license and you're applying as a small entity, then your needs are going to be very different and how much time this person is going to spend with you matters. So how much time are they going to spend with you? Um, larger multi-state operators that have full teams have different needs and they also have lots of consultants, but their needs may be different. So Vet them in the sense of what is it that you need, how big is your, how much attention do you need, and how much, be aware how much you don't know. So when you are prepared to be, be ready and ask and, and make sure that you understand how much time the, the consultant is going to give to your, to your process. I love um, that. It's great. Please, please continue. <laughs> um, 
And, and that's actually, that's pretty much the bigger yeah. item. Like what is, because the guidance is important. Some of them are really small. I have a client that um, I, I, it's a smaller, um, I would say it's, it's a micro license, a retail micro license. And we did a lot of the work that I, know, but I, they're smaller. We did a lot of work for them. He probably has never worked with anyone else in terms of this consultant, but we did a lot of work behind the thing. So we did need a, an attorney. So we did, I did that, advise him to get an attorney um, as a retainer because I do always go through it, you know, but we didn't use them that much. And we were able to do a lot of the work that we did without attorneys. It was just, but he was so actually with this client, I love him. He was great. He did a lot of the work on his end, but he also was very mindful of, I don't understand what this part, part is. So getting that information, working with him um, was important. So we didn't need actually a lot of attorney time, which was great for him. That's not always the case, by the way. Right. That's not always right. the case, but it was helpful. And I'm sure that he saved a lot of money on that. Um, but just finding that kind of right connection, like what is it that you need is the most important part of it. That's great. I, I love the points that you're making. Again, because of the conversations that we do have, uh, that there are so many people that they're starting off small, they're small businesses, right? They, they're, they've they got definitely, they have financial concerns, uh, they do have time concerns. And so you're hitting on all of these wonderful uh, considerations as I think about uh, if I'm that person for getting ready for an application and, uh, and I hear get a consultant and then I'm thinking, well, I don't need a consultant, uh, but you're you're helping them get there. So I do hope that those uh, individuals, those teams are definitely going to tune into this and, and hear your words of wisdom. That That's brilliant. Now I'm going to get a little bit personal because I, I do uh, I, I do think about this. Um, you and I are ethnic. And so when we created the legislation, and the regulation, there was this legislative and regulatory intent that communities that have been historically disadvantaged uh, should, should consider, should be considered, they were made a priority in terms of licensing, in terms of uh, scoring and, and priorities uh, with handing out licenses. And so one of the things that I've noticed uh, depending on the networking session. Uh, sometimes I think we don't have enough ethnicity in the room, right? That people aren't making the investment, uh, whether it's $50, $75, uh, sometimes more, but you know, I'm proud to say, you know, we, we keep our prices reasonable. And I don't think that uh, communities of color are really taking advantage of these opportunities, right? To come and meet people like you at a New Jersey Canada business event. Uh, more importantly, I think sometimes we, uh, we as applicants of color, uh, we are tempted to say, I think we should have a consultant of color or we should have an ethnic consultant. And there are a number of people who are ethnic who may not be the best choice in terms of their consulting abilities, right? Uh, it, it's almost like the, the saying that I've used, just because I like weed doesn't need, mean that I need to be in the weed business. Uh, just, just because I'm uh, educated and I may know a little bit about some things, maybe I'm not a great consultant. So when it comes to that, and I'm not trying to uh, to, to downplay anybody who's trying to be a consultant or start a consulting business. But what, what are your thoughts? I mean, I just shared some of mine, my concerns. So what are your thoughts as it pertains to uh, large firms versus small firms versus uh, maybe you see a person of color uh, who's a, a sole, sole practitioner and they want to be a consultant? Uh, how, how would you treat that interaction? Like maybe maybe it's the interview questions, right? What what would you do uh, to help uh, help figure out if what am I asking the right questions? 
um, as you're hiring the consultant? Yes. Or as, um, meaning if you're a big or company that is trying to hire a consultant, a minority, black and brown, um, right. to make, yes. It depends on the size. And once again, it depends on what is it that you need. I do, again, as a person of color, it's always fun to see a person that you can identify that it is. Um, because again, as much as we, uh, this legislation and it was to increase and in, or they make attempts to increase uh, the industry. So for black and brown and people of color come into in, in part of this industry, it's still, you, we still don't see that. Right. It's still, we still don't see that. Um, and those are the cannabis groups that are coming into town. So you don't have also, at the same time, you also don't have a lot of consultants with experience in this industry. I mean, this is relatively new, four or five years in New Jersey. So it's still a relatively new industry. And um, so the question, I guess, is again, expertise. Like what is it that you can, first of all, what is it that you need as, your, as, a, as a cannabis company? or trying to form your company, what is it that you need? Which part of it is missing? Um, and what experience do you need? So for example, at the local level, which is kind of what is, is the biggest thing that I do at the local government, uh, government relations, local level, uh, community organizing, that's what I do. That's my, my experience. That's what I have done statewide and obviously in cannabis a lot more deeper. But is understanding your needs. So when they come to me, for example, I know my, and even my geographical location, I know my, my, I know where I'm better suited. So even when they interviewed me, for example, I can also explain what is it that I do, but I also know my geographical location. It tends to be central North Jersey. It does not mean that I can't go into South Jersey because I do have an understanding, but my forte is in the Northern part. Um, if you are interested in, if you're also a larger company and you are interested in, and you understand that your group is not diverse and you need that, and you also want it because it's also, we also work with companies that just want to check that box. And I find it, um, disingenuine in some part, but it's needed. And maybe we just have to make sure that they understand the importance of it. So one is, Understand your needs. If you're if if you're not diverse enough and you need that kind of assistance, then then yes, that's important. But also, what is it that they can bring to the table as well? I mean, again, I know a lot of things, but I don't know all of them. And then I try to be as honest with them as possible as to what I, I can and cannot. Latino community is what I have done, and even in the, in, in in black communities. Um, our firm has done a lot of group in the African American community, and so we do have that. Um, so that's what I would bring into the table. I like that answer. Yes. It, it, it makes me think of some things that people typically don't think about. Uh, so, so let's let's backtrack just oh. so I can. I, oh, please. I'm sorry. Let me just do one more before I forget. I just want to say one more thing in terms of. I'm sorry to interrupt. Larger companies that come in and want to do be do, do diversity, and that is important. As, as uh, black and brown communities and consultants, we should also bring that kind of level of teaching them as well and making sure that these companies, especially the multi-state operators coming out of town, don't understand New Jersey, don't understand the difference between like what happens in Jersey City, in Jersey City that yes, a lot a Latino population, but you also have a large um, Asian Indian population. Like we also in this different, uh, but also as consultants, we also have to also educate them as well as the importance of this, because we love New Jersey. I love New Jersey. And I want to make sure they also like and love New Jersey, maybe a little bit like me. Yeah. Uh, so making sure that they also introduce our communities in a way that it is respectful and that they also actually understand and give that importance to it. So we also, as consultants, we also have that kind of responsibility. Also educating the, these communities. I mean, there's groups uh, with lack of diversity as to why you should have it, but also how important we are to this conversation. It's not a checkbox. It's not a token uh, person of color in your team that you can show up in this community that you want to be in. No, it's teach them. Let's just educate them as well, just as we educate our towns and our local government and explaining the importance and the relevance of this industry into your town. 
we should also educate the out-of-towners the importance of diversity and inclusion in you and this industry as well, as you come in part of, as you become in part of New Jersey. That's excellent. I love that. Thank you so much. So let me, let me kind of highlight uh, the information that you put out there for uh, our participants. So when it comes to consultants, consultants who may be of color, uh, absolutely viable in this space because we do bring a different perspective. We bring a perspective that you may have been missing, especially if you don't have such a diverse team. So yes, do consider consultants of color, uh, but it is a business and you do have to always make sure that you can afford it, check your budget, make sure that that person that you interview them, just like you would anybody else, interview that consultant regardless of who they are. Make sure that, that they are filling the need that you have. Make sure you know what you need and make sure that they can fulfill that need. More importantly, uh, at that community level, bringing, bringing a sense of what communities and certain communities need, that that's where, uh, in particular, uh, diverse consulting companies, uh, they bring that advantage. So, so I think that's, that's all great stuff, Alex Sohn. Thank, thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, so let's, let's look at some of the challenges that uh, I know some of our applicants have faced. And when they come to a New Jersey Canada business event, uh, or they write us, they contact us on email, uh, municipalities, legislation gave so much authority to municipalities with respect to uh, the number of licenses, right? So to be clear, the state, with the exception of cultivation, uh, which ends on February 23rd, uh, with the exception of that, uh, municipalities in, in effect set the, the number of licenses that can operate. It's municipalities that determine the zones in which you can operate. Uh, so when it comes to that, what are some of the considerations uh, when we look at municipalities and dealing with municipalities? What has been your experience uh, on that level? Oh, wow. That is a home rule game. And yeah, the challenges are huge. Um, the first thing is, uh, the first thing is trying to have, once you identify the town that you're interested in, and first of all, you should identify various, several, lists should be long. Um, now, since we've gone, uh, we municipalities now have had time to create ordinance and resolutions and again, and, and number of licenses per town. So understanding that to begin with, it should be your first thing. Like if a town has already four licenses, um, they have an ordinance, it's open, four licenses are available now, you know that, they, but now you, it's the tricky part, understanding how they've been given them out, how is this still available? So, and that's really labor intensive. And I say this because now you have to understand all the things are happening by town, town by town means, for example, yes, a town may have Ha, may have a resolution, an ordinance that says we are allowing for retails. We also know, for example, that they have already given out resolutions to, to fill out those four spots. But now we also find out that the CRC and, and the towns, and we, now we know that those two, the two out of those four will now become operation. And that's a really sad reality in this business. And that goes, and, and I think we are, it's the unspoken truth at this point that it is happening, that it's going to become, but now municipality. So then we have that. So now we know, for example, a municipality has already knows that they can fill out the two. So they are in a very difficult spot. And I'm seeing this in some of, with some of my clients and some of my, the towns is that they don't know what to do at this point, because on the one hand, they were very, they want to have this business in town. They gave out their resolutions. They want them to become operational, but they're for various reasons two of those licenses will not become operational. Maybe not now, but maybe not in five years, maybe never. So now they, so then as you come in and start looking at, so then you have to become, start learning those kinds of relationships and those kinds of dynamics. And I keep saying labor intensive because 
you can just Google this, but that doesn't give you that much information. It's actually understanding the town, having that kind of relationship with whoever is in the town so they can give you additional information. Um, sometimes the town don't, the towns don't know what to do in those kinds of cases. So it's not even bad. Um, uh, they want to do the right thing. They just don't know what to do. So, so the question about local and municipalities is just really difficult is very also because when, because again the, the other layer to local home rule is that elections happen um leadership changes um and even some of these kinds of you know and one of the challenges i will also bring another challenge is that even with companies that are in in the process when elections happen sometimes they're if they're in the middle of the process they get caught in that in those kinds of politics um, so, so the bigger thing is understand that municipality, understand that town, but also know that things still change. It doesn't matter how great of a relationship you may have, and it's better to have a good relationship, obviously, than not. Um, but there's a lot of uh, unexpected things happening at every single moment. Um, but yeah, have a good relationship to your towns. I mean, but it's not one, it's two or three, or it's four. And keep tags on that with those relationships in those towns. See, I'm glad you're saying it, right? If I say it, some sometimes people hear it and it's like, okay, but I'm glad someone else is saying it. Relationships, having relationships and knowing, uh, having someone like a consultant who can help bridge the the relationship gaps that you may have as an applicant and not just an applicant there are ancillary businesses where you may want to uh actually uh be in a in a community uh it, because this is not just about plant touching opportunities these are other opportunities so thank you for talking about our relationships one of the other things that uh i do in in some of my public speaking i've actually asked people uh, and, and I'm putting this in quotes, uh, how many of you have actually ever attended a council meeting? How many of you have ever gone to a public meeting at all? And, and so it, it becomes this, this situation where you're not only new to the cannabis business, but you're new to processes. You're new to public processes whether it's the state application process or a local RFP process. So if you could help me out there and stress kind of the importance of knowing or at least getting familiar, attending things like council meetings, attending zoning and planning meetings, being at least familiar with the public process. I mean, you just said it. Yes, it is. It's time consuming. It's not the, the, the most fun part sometimes of this meeting. It has nothing to do with your issue. Um, so I understand. Yeah, no, you're correct. Um, you're correct on that, especially if you have an interest. Um, I do believe, and I will say something, I do believe that some of my serious, and I say serious, uh, my clients um, and are because they're so immersed in the process, they actually do watch those meetings a lot more than I thought they would. And so I'm happy because it does help the process. It makes the process easier. It makes my explanation of what this is have much easier. No, it's not um, an incident just happened in one of the council meetings, for example, on Monday. And it's hard to explain as a consultant that, no, I can't read everything that happens on those kinds of meetings, but I'm glad that you saw it. Um, but it it's yes, if you're not used to this kinds of um processes, then it is um it's not just complicated, it's it's can it, it can be boring sometimes. Uh, yes. And you and but you they're important, but they're important. They are absolutely important. And you touched on another matter just then that it's not just the consultant, right? I can't dump everything on you. It's, it's a teamwork thing, right? I'm going to hear something and it's up to me to share it with you and, or at least ask you the question. So, so it really is a team effort. 
and and that's that's what I'd like you to kind of es- embrace and and expound on that. Right? It's a team effort. You are part of the team once I hire you. And also knowing your lane. So to your point about the team, it's also knowing your lane. Again, I I love working. Um, we do follow up with the larger teams and the large groups. It's important to have at least that follow up with who the attorneys are, because there's, you know, again, the larger process and the larger application, then the, they have, you know, sometimes a team of three or four attorneys, different specialties, of course. But it's, it's important to understand where the entire process is. So you can have and understand that, again, where the process is, where you are, and where you fit in. And sometimes in some those conversations, you stay quiet and you listen. Uh, it's a legal question. Uh, and as a consultant, I can only provide my opinion based on what I understand and what I know. But then let everybody know exactly what they're supposed to do and know. Excellent points. And also knowing your lanes. So, Alex, Ohm, before I ask you for your closing remarks, I want to once again thank our sponsors. I want to thank Proteus 420, Financial Resources Federal Credit Union, Sachs LLP, Burton Trent Public Affairs, Cureleaf, Garden State Green Energy, Dutchie, Puffin Entrepreneurs and Investors, Sprague, our preferred energy partner, the Sheet Metal Workers Local 19. And uh, for those of you who are interested in either sponsoring a lunch and learn, or sponsoring uh, one of our business-to-business networking events. Please feel free to reach out. We'd be glad to uh, talk about how you can be a sponsor of our events. So everyone, once again, I want to thank you all. Alex Zone, any closing thoughts? Um, no, I'm, I'm happy. Thank you for doing this. This is going to be, in my mind, this year is going to be the year of uh, getting ourselves open and operational. Um, that has all other challenges, but uh, I'm excited about this year. I think that we're going to have an actual, a lot of approved applications uh, becoming open, but that in itself is another process about making sure that your local communities are fully um, informed and vetted and all of that. So, but I am, I'm excited about this year. I think we're going to have a lot of openings and a lot of ribbon cuttings. And I I'm agree with that. you. I absolutely agree with I, you. I, make sure I get my invitations when you get I, one- Yes. <laughs> so, no, I'm really excited about that. Oh, that, I, I completely agree with you. I think this is going to be a great year as the industry will just continue to grow for the next few years. Uh, so again, Alex Son Calazos of the Gill Group, I want to thank you once again for being uh, with us here at uh, uh, Lunch and Learn. I also want to remind everyone that on February 28th, uh, save the date. February 28th, we're going to have our Lift the Cap event. So save the date. We'll be getting back to you with uh, some more details on where that event will be. Uh, Appreciate the CRC and uh, the fact that we are going to lift the cap on cultivation in 2023, February 23rd. Uh, Stay tuned. February 8th is the CRC meeting. So, So February 8th, CRC meeting. So stay tuned. Tune into that. Stay informed. Again, Alex Son Calazos, B. Gill Group. I want to thank you all for joining us. I'm Ed DeVoe, president of the New Jersey Canna Business Association. By all means, guys, we, we love you. Thank you so much uh, for taking time out and being with us. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank, thank you, you again. Thank you. Bye.